coming today. We'll uh, start off with a few special menus. <laughs> This year's uh, International Student Company Festival was supported by the project Innovative Entrepreneurship Motivation Program of, an, of the Investment and Development Agency of Latvia with co-funding from the European Regional Development Fund and European Union. Thank you again to the International Teachers Conference. Uh, it goes out to Riga Business School for its support, to its strategic partner, Swedbank. Uh, it's a very good partner, the Riga Plaza Shopping Center, uh, where the trade fair will take place tomorrow. And we have some special things for you tomorrow um, for active participation. Special thanks to the Latvian Chamber of Commerce and Industry, and uh, also Inbox, LV, and Draudium LV. So thank you all. And again, thank you all if you didn't hear it. Thank you all for coming. Uh, my name is Bill Schaub. I'll be moderating and uh, hopefully keeping us on time. Uh, is, does everyone have the agenda? Right, so you see who's, so I'll, uh, I won't waste too much time, but we'll have some uh, announcements. And some of the speakers will uh, offer, the, offer themselves up for questions and answers. And some don't have the time to do the question and answer. Uh, but. Um, We'll start right away so that we stay on, on track. Uh, our opening speaker, of course, is going to be Giannis uh, Krivich, who, uh, who uh, is the CEO of Junior Achievement here. Okay, and uh, I think you have Giannis's credentials in front of you. So I won't read you all the good things he's done, but just get him up here to speak, if that's okay with Giannis. Okay? Thank you. Dear Minister of Education and Science of Republic of Latvia, dear teachers, dear consultants, and dear our special guests, I am very happy to see you so many here from 15 different countries, and here we are around more than 100 teachers, and this is the number what has never reached before, so I would like to applause for this event. It proves that we are so many here, the importance of sharing uh, the experience and methodology what we have in each different country. And uh, we are not just simple teachers, I would say, we are very special teachers because uh, you are also the mentors of student companies and uh, this is not the same as to teach literacy or to teach economics as itself but uh, to be a mentor it's a very special skill and you need to have a very special knowledge to do that and uh, as most of the part we are um, a part of junior achievement uh, organization which is the biggest organization in the world um, empowering young people for entrepreneurship and economical success so we are the ones we are one of this huge network and uh, uh, I can say that uh, this network is very strong, as we can see today, and uh, we will see it also tomorrow when uh, 85 student companies will compete with each other, and uh, uh, this festival is also a competition, a competition for your students, and I would also like to say that somehow it's maybe a competition also for you as the teachers. Uh, to see the results of your methodology and about your uh, work you have done and you can see the results of the students of tomorrow uh, festival. Uh, and um, also, the education programs need uh, uh, a change a little bit in the, according to the labor market. Uh, and uh, it has to come more attractive and interactive, less standardized and more personalized and even more entertaining. And there is a question about this, are we ready for this? And uh, I would say we are ready for this, we are the ones who are breaking the system sometimes. And I know that it's an issue not just in Latvia, it's somehow issue also in Europe uh, to change the mindset uh, of the teaching. And, uh, 
students need to have interactive uh, methods to develop them skills not just in entrepreneurship but in very different uh, different type of fields and um, the institution of the future for the forecast 2020 uh, has a set 10 essential work skill uh, skills of labor market for the future and they are like sense making novel and adaptive thinking transdisciplinarity design thinking social intelligence, new media literacy, computer thinking, um, conjecture load management, virtual teamwork and cross-cultural competency. And the last one, cross-cultural competency, uh, is I would say also one of the most important uh, uh, skill what we can develop during this event. Uh, because this is very important that our students are starting to think not just local but global. Uh, if we are comparing uh, the business in uh, America or the business in Europe, uh, Europe uh, businessmen, businessmen in Europe are thinking more local. And these kind of events in uh, very early age for the students can break the mindset as well uh, and they can start to think global and uh, we will gain in the future definitely from and it will be benefit for all of us in each country we are in. <coughs> and uh, uh, so what I would like to tell you that today you need to be very active, uh, you need to uh, be inspired, hopefully you will be inspired of course, and you need to be ready to share, share your knowledge and uh, the skills what you have uh, while you are teaching the students, because today we can gain from each other and uh, not just uh, to give but also to get. So I wish you a very, very good day for you today and uh, also uh, I hope to see you in the national uh, evening uh, where we can have some informal conversation about uh, you and about uh, us and uh, uh, to get know each other and became a friends if we don't have yet became a friends. Okay, <laughs> thanks a lot and have a nice day today. Thank you, Giannis. Um, you're all teachers. You're all experienced with taking notes and paying attention, but also for preparation for class. And Giannis mentioned that there's things in Old Town tomorrow. I have a question. Let's see who can answer it. How many students worldwide does Junior Achievement support right now? Anybody know? Anybody want to take a guess? No. Bigger. Little smaller. Who said that? Ten. Yes, you're not fair though. You know. <laughs> Ten point what? Anybody want to try? Ten point five. Close. Seven. You you surrounded it. Six. Congratulations. Our first winner for a free coffee tomorrow morning in Old Town. Congratulations. All right, would you like an easier question? One more until before we get to the minister. Let's demonstrate now the excellence in the room. How many countries is junior achievement right now in?
sure you're going to get better at this as the day goes on. <laughs> All right? Now, you have to take notes and pay attention. We have the Minister of Education for the Republic of Latvia, the Honorable Ina Druvieta, and I apologize if I ruined that for you. Would you like me to introduce your credentials? This is the second time she's the minister. She was the minister back in 2004 to 2006. And I have to tell you, I was the chairman of the International School of Latvia at that time. So I was familiar with the Ministry of Education and trying to operate a school a little bit in, inside the Republic of Latvia, especially an English-speaking school like RBS is now. So, that is, and she is, and I think we should, you should know this, She's, um, her achievement at, at the first time was fairly substantial because she introduced something very important to Latvia. And is, is that right? The, the minority education, right, in secondary schools and below secondary schools was an important piece of legislation back about a decade ago. And she really uh, took the lead on that. And she's going to share with us. She's brand new at how many weeks are you in your job now? Uh, two months and a week. <laughs> so she's going to share with us, hopefully, some of the things that are going on in Latvia. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Dear participants of the conference, dear teachers, uh, dear entrepreneurs, uh, dear colleagues, we are learning together with 10.6 million people. We are not simply educating them. We are doing common job because our students are personalities and we want them to treat us as personalities too. It's our task to find their talents, to develop their skills, no matter mathematical, verbal, maybe kinetic or uh, artistic skills, our goal is to find uh, the talents of our students and uh, to grow together with them. Junior Achievement is a special program. This program helps us uh, to develop these entrepreneurial skills and everybody has them. We simply have to find the right way, uh, how to recognize them, how to develop them, and how to make our students to develop not only as individuals, but also as the members of society. Our system of education is changing. We are more concentrating on individuals, on personalities, we are no more treating our students as simply units in the labor market. We want them to be employers, not employees. We want them to find their own way in life. We are thinking about development of social skills, on the development of emotional skills, in order to make our world healthy and wealthy. And you do this. You have very rich experience. Uh, uh, you have a common exchange of uh, ideas. And uh, you all are contributing uh, uh, to the development of our students' uh, talents, skills, abilities, knowledge for development of all these features absolutely necessary uh, for their life in the society. I like the title of your conference very much, 101 Methods to Develop Entrepreneurial Skills and Leadership. Indeed, uh, there are no certain rules, there are no universal mechanisms for developing these skills. We simply uh, have to see the appropriate method out of not only 101, maybe out of 1,001 methods. And you have managed to do this. 
And this conference is very important because of uh, this wide international exchange of ideas. Uh, you came from different countries, and special thanks to teachers from uh, Latvia for your being here. Latvia is very active in the uh, program called Junior Achievement, and our students are very skillful. Of course, it's impossible uh, to have a special ch subject called uh, entrepreneurial skills. In some schools we have, but all teachers, irrespective of what they are teaching, mathematics, uh, chemistry, maybe even literature, uh, can uh, uh, develop uh, these ideas uh, how to make our students more active in life. And this exchange of ideas uh, would help us. And it would help not only for you as personalities, as teachers, it would be helpful not only for the respective school you are working in, but it would be of great help for all the system of education. We are not learning and we are not teaching only within the formal school education. We are uh, developing our talents in informal education, education which uh, depends on our special interests and why not this special interest in entrepreneurship it is it exists and this conference is very worthy because of this wide international exchange of ideas and uh, because of uh, this cooperation among teachers and among our entrepreneurs I wish the very best to the conference. I wish success for all of you, and we are looking uh, forward to more closer cooperation uh, between Junior Achievement and Latin Ministry of Education. Thank you. knows and is familiar with, because you all must be, the Junior Achievement Vision. All right, let me ask you a question and see if you can intuit. What boundaries are on young people? Hmm? What's the boundary of the potential of young people? Right, they're boundaryless. Congratulations, you get involved. <laughs> okay. All right, that was sort of a trick question. successfully growing Latvian IT company that offers interactive 360 degree visualizations for such industries as real estate, cars, furniture, etc. Recently, Giraffe Visual was awarded the German Business Award for, in 2013, recognizing an outstanding company on the European level. So, Mikas, would you join us, please? Thank you very, very much. Visual. How many of you actually are here as a, are teachers? 
Can you raise your hand? Oh, I, I'm getting scared. <laughs> because in life, uh, I think the, the scariest time in my life, I, it was in school. <laughs> Business is easy. Getting through high school was harder. Uh, let's see whether there's a presentation. <coughs> So, um, I was asked today to speak about uh, our experience because we started our company early. Um, it was early in the university, I was 20, and all our team was around the same age. From, and right now we've been in business for four years and we have become leaders in our industry in the whole Northern Europe and we are looking further in the Central Europe to extend and opening our branches in Munich, St. Petersburg. So, but, and so I will just briefly share what I think, what, what was interesting for me at school and why I started business early. And, yeah, and it would be really nice if you have any question, just raise a hand and ask, then it would be more easier for me to speak. So, but to start, to start business early, um, why it's important and why I think we should more encourage youth to do that because um, so to start early is actually much easier than to start when you have all your things in life already somehow sorted out. Because at the age of 20, you don't have any responsibility. You have just some um, school loan you have just taken. And, and basically, you don't have anything to care about, let's put it that way. You don't have any big bills to pay. And that's why I think that's the great, 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 great moment when to start a business, because um, because the older we get, the more responsibilities there there becomes in lives. So, but the system today and all around the world is built like that. That uh, there's a school, like a secondary school, uh, high school, then there is college, college, university, and then you get to work as an intern. Then you have your first loan, you get your first job. The system how how we can get successful after the school is quite quite long, long. So you have to go through a lot of steps, learn a lot of things till actually you can work. So, but early I found out that, and because of, of course, of economical crisis, I found out that I don't want to spend 10, 20 years just working and then start to do serious things because I saw how long it will take for me to jump on those uh, hierarchy steps, and I thought, well, after some year working, I I thought, why can't I start my business? I start to look for look for an answer, uh, because when I was in high school, I thought that starting business is something difficult, because you have to be smart and you have to know so many things. Uh, but starting working, I understood that business is not so much about knowledge, but it's more about character, because. If you are willing to learn something, you can learn anything. And nobody here and not everywhere knows everything. So the definition of smart somehow faded out. And so when then I will be ready after my master's, after my 10 year experience, when then I will be ready for business. And I started to look for this uh, somehow. I will do it like this then more easily, uh, more relaxing. Um, yeah, so I, th I started to look for these um, answers to the question, why I can't start now? Where, where is it written that I can't do business in 2021? So, and why I need experience team? Why can I start within my school members? There are so many examples, like the cool one, like Apple, Steve, and uh, Mark Zuckerberg, Facebook, they, they didn't know anything when they started their companies. Of course, they were smart guys, but they didn't have any experience. So I thought, uh, why, why can't we try? We don't have nothing to lose. And, but I, so to start business early, right now it's more or less going against the system, like turning, turning, turning away from how it's meant to be, how you should work. You have to, without education, without this experience, like just drifting away. But what I think. Uh, in future, how it should more be uh, in school, we should more encourage, uh, and these programs are great for that, to encourage to start business early, because there's nothing wrong in that, and you can really succeed early. 
And, and again, on, on my mind, it's not about the knowledge. Sorry, sorry for that. It's more about character, about strength. Because business, um, if we see the start of something, some point, and we hear some success story, or we hear someone's experience, we see, oh, it was easy. They started somewhere, and now they are there. They just see this big, this huge leap. Yeah, everything's great. And but actually, the we all know that for sure that success comes through a lot of pain. There's a lot of points, whatever we are doing, we are building business, building career, doing anything in life. There's so many points where, where we want to turn back and say, oh, I don't want to do that. I don't, I want to quit. I, I want to go away. And, and, and business, and business especially, business, for, on my mind, it's solving problems. So, how many problems you can solve in 24 hours? So, the faster you can solve the problems, the faster your business can grow. So, and when you have solved one problem, there's no, another problem. And then there's, then they are multiplying, like, more, 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 and it's never ending story. And that's bad. Because I thought at one point you reached the point where there's no problems, but actually business series. Just the mess of the problems you are trying to solve. And it's never, it's never finished. So, and recalling, when I, when I, yesterday I checked that I have to speak for 10 minutes today here with so many teachers. I started, to, I started to think what, what, what from the school, from the high school, what was so, so good for me that, that I took from the school and, and, and it really helped me to start the business. And actually there's not so many things because, because school is again, it's about uh, getting you from this system to the next system and it's again this uh, whole leaps through the systems and the end you maybe will reach some kind of result and school was always for me about learning but today I know that business is not about what I know it's not it's what about what I want to know and if I have a motivation to know something to learn something I will always find information today's information uh, information era when every everything we want to learn is few clicks away uh, we just need to start to search. So, business is about character, about overcoming yourself, going through these difficult moments, and and not quitting, not failing, but failing, 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 but just keep going further. And 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 so I thought that in school, it should more be in, on my mind. It should not be more about some specific topics that I have to learn, but it, it's more about habits. Because getting older, day by day, on our daily routine, like eating, drinking, learning, working, we build our habits. And I think we build the layers and layers of habits to the point where we found out, when we understand that we are doing this thing only because we have been doing this for so long time. And, and, and building these habits and building these stereotypes around us, how it should work or how we should do certain things and how we shouldn't. And then we start to put these habits into, like to, into youth and to the next generation and say, you have to do it like this, you have to do it like this. And, but I think it would be more, uh, starting business early is just looking back inside of yourself, not to others, not to other habits, not to other thoughts and, and seeing what you really want and how you want to do it. And then you can set a goal and then you can start working, start learning what you have to learn. So I think school in the future should be more about developing habits to learn, developing habits to succeed, developing these habits, uh, so, uh, these things that will help us to achieve our results. Because we can't learn anything, everything, and we, but there's so many things around us, so many lessons, so many, uh, yeah, so, so many, so many. Uh, and again, Steve Jobs, the guru of, of all entrepreneurs. Um, why I think it's important? Because in one interview, sorry, uh, in one interview he was asked uh, what you're afraid of. You're more afraid from Windows, Howard Packard, Dell, 
who your biggest competitor in the future? He said, I'm not afraid of any of them. Um, I know their habits. I'm more afraid from some young guy in high school who's working in garage, not understanding what he's doing, and will develop some kind of thing that will just push me out of the business because he will be with his new brains in completely new thinking level, much better than any of me or my competitors can be. And so if Steve Jobs, one of the great stand-up viewers ever, was afraid from the high school students only, uh, we, we shouldn't take this in our minds. Um, and so, yeah, uh, so school, uh, in, in the school, it, um, I liked a lot of things, and, but it was really hard for me because I wanted to always question why we are doing this and not doing this. I wanted to do so, so many things different. But, uh, and we know that if you have the right motivation, if you have like a certain goals, you can achieve anything you want. So again, I will repeat myself that I think the school is more about developing habits, learn how to study, how to succeed, not about specific areas on uh, how we, uh, and how we can do that. Yeah, that's uh, more or less my experience. And when we started, started our business, and because of why I'm certain about these kind of things, because when we started our business, uh, I, I had an, the essence of our company, we make uh, photography, 360, and then we work on the programs, and then a lot of other things. But the, at the key step at the beginning was the photo from the place. You had to visualize it. But at the day I founded the company, I had never in my life uh, had a photo camera. And our first, uh, our first photographer, my friend, our best friend and my friend from the high school, uh, he became our first professional photographer, but before we bought our first camera and I gave it to him, he had never used the camera in his life before. This was his first, uh, oh, I, I, I just asked him, Emil, do you want to be a photographer? He said, yeah, how hard you can be. And, and we had a goal. We wanted, we wanted to develop a specific product. Um, then, we re then we learned how to work on this system. Then we, want, then we set our next goals, and we, and we, were, we were dedicated to our aims, and because we knew how we want to live, how we want to operate, and it was four years ago, and now we are in top three in the Europe in what we do in the whole Europe, and, and the leaning in Northern Europe. So uh, I think that, and the key for us getting from zero, from just being a student, and reaching the top of our industry and developing market market further, where there before hadn't even think about possibilities. Uh, yeah, it was because we had a goal, and then we just focused our habits and developed the habits to work hard, to push ourselves, and we learned what we with what we had to do to to get this product done. But it was more about us than about knowing something before. Mm. So. Do you have any questions? Thank you for your attention. And thanks also from doing it at human. Thanks, Mikus. And uh, I want to also tell something about Mikus that uh, uh, you will see Mikus also tomorrow because uh, Mikus will be the head of the jury panel. So. <laughs> Uh, take your time, and you, if you will stay, money. yeah, if you will stay uh, during the coffee break, <laughs> you have to leave. So okay, anyway, tomorrow. tomorrow you will tell some yeah. as well. Okay, thanks again. Okay. Thank you. Are there any history teachers here? Okay. What year? Was junior achievement created first? First year of junior achievement. Who said that? Very good. Very good. That's such a friend at the table, isn't it? Wow. No.
Anybody want to render a guess as to what Junior Achievement's first name was? It wasn't a Junior Achievement until 1920. And then the first year of operation it operated it under a different name. Does anybody know that? You won't believe it if I tell you. It's the Boys and Girls Bureau of the Eastern States League. And changed its name to the Junior Achievement Bureau in 1920. It changed to Junior Achievement Inc. in 1926. Okay, and I gave you that history lesson because our next speaker has a long history of Junior Achievement. And I'm going to just have a terrible time with this name, but Jarle Tomerbake, I'm told. Is that okay? Thank you. He's got 25 years experience in the field of education, 13 of them as the head of Junior Achievement in Norway. And, and I don't know what YA is, Jonah, so I'm, I apologize. Young Enterprise. A young Enterprise, okay. But thank you very much. I, they all, you all have his very impressive credentials, and I'll leave you to see. Thank you. Thank you, Robert. I'll have to finish <laughs> the last presentation first. Thank you for inviting me. Um, I just want to congratulate Janice and Human Achievement of Latvia for doing this for us. I think it's really great that uh, people are putting effort into bringing young people together across borders. You should do much more of that, Janice. So congratulations for what you're doing. Really appreciate it. Uh, I'm going to talk about an initiative called uh, the Entrepreneurial School. Uh, this should be here, sir. The Entrepreneurial School, a part of it, is a web page where we have collected what we could find so far of entrepreneurial tools and methods. We've collected a lot of good practice from different schools. We collected a lot of framework, which means job description, plans, vision, and things like that. We collected a lot of documents, policy documents, strategic documents from all over Europe. And we put in a few self-assessment tools, one for teachers <coughs> and one for schools, to see uh, if you improve when you're into entrepreneurship education. Uh, I myself, I've been working on this project both from the Norwegian Union Achievement Young Enterprise Norway and the European organization, Union Achievement Young Enterprise Europe. I'll come back to all this. I could have shown all this live, but since it's a web page, it's so small. But if you want to go and have a look, feel free. That's off. That's all. Yeah. Uh, this is a three-year project. It's financed by EU. It's quite a big EU project. It's a budget of close to a million euros in here. And the focus is on teachers. The focus is on the teachers. It's a guide where we want teachers to share. It's made by teachers for teachers. And we also have a lot of partners in it. It will be translated into seven different, or yes, seven different languages. It's all in English now. It's accessible. I'll show you the address when I get a little bit further down. But these are the partners in the project. It's uh, quite a big organization in Brussels called the European Round Table of Industrialists. So it's where Siemens and those big, big, big companies in Europe are members. It's the Polish Union Achievement, it's JY Europe, it's in the wage and home town Penosco. European Schoolnet is involved, Union Achievement Portugal, the Lappenranta University of Technology, University of Warwick. Uh, Union Achievement in Italy, in Slovakia, 
University Capital Colleagues of Copenhagen, Accenture, Clifford Towns, Intel, MetLife, or an Innovation Employers Organization called Vitke. So all these are partners in this project. The way we started it, well, first we had to write a proposal to EU, and they said this is good, so go ahead. Uh, so the way we started it, we went out to all these eight countries, and we asked them to establish a national focus group consisting of some of the best people within entrepreneurship education in each country. Then we recruited ten schools in each country. And these schools should be schools which were into entrepreneurship education. So they had to score themselves on a scale on quite a lot of different criteria. Uh, then we started collecting entrepreneurial tools and methods which has been used and is still being used in those different schools or among those people in the national focus group. So in fact it's not about creating something new, it's more about trying to figure out what's out there. Why did we do this? Well there's, there's pretty strong political signals at the European level about entrepreneurship education. The reason of course is because we see youth and employment in countries, some of the countries more than 50%, while in Greece and Cyprus it's up to 60% of the people between 15 and 25 are out of work, and these are the people who are really looking for work. We can see the same trend in all European countries. And from what you just heard now, this, this thing about waiting until you are in Norway, the average age of, age of setting up a company is 42 years. In Europe, I think it's 41 years. So we need young people who are not only thinking about getting a job, but we need young people who, in fact, can create their own jobs. And of course, the school system is more or less the only system we have in order to create that kind of entrepreneurial spirit in these young people. That's why they are saying this, that it's never been as important as now. And the return on investment is really high. The only country I know who tried to calculate it is Canada. And they did a lot of math and calculation. They looked into how much does an unemployed cost, how much is the average value of a new business and things like that. And they came up to that when the Canadian government put one dollar into their human achievement organization, they got forty-five dollars back. And this was the Boston Consulting Group, which, which is a consulting company with quite high reputation, and they did this kind of research. So that's the reason why there's so much push on entrepreneurship education. This is the address, test guide, www test guide. So if you want, you can go in, it's live. It's only in English so far. And I'm just going to take you through a few of these uh, slides to show you where it is. The first one you'll make is a tools and methods. When you go in there, for the time being, you'll find, I think, 102 different tools and methods which you can use in your classroom. They've all been tried. They all are in use. <clears throat> and you can search by age of student, what kind of subject, a teaching issue that means more cooperation with external teaching techniques, or different learning outcomes. When you go in there, you will see this. First, you will have to decide the age level you are. And you can choose. The second thing is the subject. And this is particular one subject, science, technology, engineering, and math, which is quite high focus on. But you can also go to language, art, history. Then you can do a search on teaching issue. And 
all the time you'll reduce the number of tools and methods which will come up. And finally, you can do a search on different learning outcomes, which is important in entrepreneurship education, which is taking risks, self-confidence, leadership, decision making, and so on, and so on. So you can reduce the search down to, I'm teaching at primary level, I'm teaching math, and I want something about self-confidence. I don't know if that's possible, but it should be. <clears throat> so this is an example of a search. I, ser I did a search on a primary level, dealing with moral and ethical issues, and I got up six results. When I click on the results, this is what I will see. I will see a description of the tool. I will see all the areas of implementation and I will see all the learning outcomes. These learning outcomes are not scored by me or anyone else, it's scored by the teachers in those schools who have used this tool and that. If you go further, you will see who provided them, which country it's from, and on the left hand side you will see all the information we are asking. There's links, there's videos, there's all kinds of attachments, you can download attachments which are used and developed by teachers in different schools. <coughs> There's all kind of support material to use in the classroom. For instance, this is one, creative cards that comes from Norway. And on the right hand side we have a review tool. Uh, where it's based on this travel advice, trip advice, or Amazon, or all that, where you as a teacher can go in and score it. First by stars, from one to five stars. Oh, I really like this. Five stars, and you can write a review to some of your colleagues, telling them what this is about, how you used it, ask a question, or do whatever you want. This is, has so far 24 different reviews, and you can see all the reviews down on the page. So you can just follow them and you can see if this is something for me. I'm just showing you screenshots now. You're not meant to read all this. And if you like the tool, you just download it. And on your computer you will have 20, no, 52 of these different cards you can use in your classroom immediately. So what we like people to do is to sign in to this, to contribute, to be a part of this network of teachers within entrepreneurship. And because we want your email, so we can keep in touch with you. And we want you to, to update you when something's happening in there. We want to update you when there's new things coming out. And we want you to help us to do reviews. There's about 200 people so far. It's only been open for a month or so. And it's not done yet. We will start translating it this week. And uh, because we're out testing it now, all those tools and methods in there are now back into schools. And each tool is supposed to be tested in three or four different countries. And then we'll get feedback from the test then we'll revise it once more. So these things should work on an international level. And that's a, a bit of the intention behind it. We want to know that if somebody done it in Latvia, and somebody done that tool or method in Sweden, kids can also start cooperating based on what they've been through. Okay, the next thing here is the good practice. And this is where we collected all those ten, uh, 80 schools. And we have a lot of examples of job description for an entrepreneurship educator, uh, entrepreneurship organizator at the school, for instance. We have good visions for a school. We have examples of all kinds of stuff in there. And you can do the same. You can search by country or by area. 
And these are the case study schools, and they will move on. We will put in new schools in here. But these case study schools, which are there, there's a much deeper dive into them. We try to get an interview with the headmaster. We try to get some more pictures in there. We try to ask them, what do you really do when you work with entrepreneurship education? <laughs> the third area, which is called policy and strategy, is where we are trying to upload a library of a lot of documents. It can be national plans, it can be EU documents. Again, if I search on EU up there in the search field, I'll get six results out. And these are the OECD reports and things like that. So these are more meant to be national documents international documents about entrepreneurship education. The last area is fun and interesting area. We all like these quizzes and this kind of entrepreneurial quiz where you can, it's not a quiz, that's not fair to Lapland Ranta University and the University of Warwick, it's more than a quiz. But it's a, a place where you can go in on that Lapland Ranta tour. You, as a teacher, can go in and score yourself. On the Warwick tool, the school, you can score your school. Where is your school now? The Warwick tool is still being developed. The Lappen Ranta tool is ready to go. And this Lappen Ranta tool, you just score yourself on it takes about 50 minutes maybe to go through the questionnaire there. When you've done it, you get feedback. Because there's about, I think there's about 2,000 Finnish teachers who've done it. And there will be more and more European teachers now in this database. And you will get feedback based on the average in the database. And you can do this as often as you want. Normally we recommend you to do it maybe twice a year. And it's kind of fun to see if you go up and down here. You see, you can get feedback like this. This is the... The blue one is all responding. This is me scoring. And the red one is me. So I'm quite high above uh, when it comes to development. When it comes to planning, I've gone down. So you can see it's not that good. <laughs> but it's, this is a, a really nice tool you can use if the school, if you're discussing entrepreneurship education in the school and how to start, how to move ahead, to get focused. It, I'm not sure if you will get that many answers from it, but it's, it's a good tool to start thinking. <clears throat> so, what we hope is that as many as possible, and I hope that you all here will log on to this tool. Just sign up. It's not, we will not give anyone your email, but if you hook off, you will get a newsletter every second month from us. In that newsletter, we'll be more promoting our new tools and methods we have, and, think, and conferences and things like that that's going on. And we also hope that if you know one of these tools or methods in there, that you can share your opinion about it. Or, if you want to try it, you can share your opinion about it, or you can give feedback to somebody who's donated it or delivered it us, to us. They've done a great job by giving this tool a method, and we are constantly trying to improve them. Uh, in August, this uh, platform will be translated, will be done, in, will be uh, working in Italian, in Portuguese, in Finnish, in Danish, in Norwegian, uh, I said Italian. Well, there's eight, eight different languages, at least. And more languages will probably come. We're 
talking about Russian, French, German at least. But it also means that if you have, and we know the world is quite international, if you have students from abroad, you might go here and pick something that you are familiar with in your own language. So we hope you'll all be in there and uh, hook on to it. And I think that's what I wanted to say, Janis. It's, uh, it's your brief on it. I didn't show you anything in there, but you can go in and do it on yourself and just enjoy it. It's very easy to use. Thank you. And thanks also from Junior Richroom and Latvia Thank you. for coming and this was very useful information and I would suggest to every teacher just to go and try because uh, uh, we, our three uh, of uh, our teachers had the possibility to go to Bristol uh, where was the trainings for this platform and they came back and uh, they said that this platform is very useful and uh, so it's free and just really go and sign up and look what is there. Okay, thanks a lot. Thank you. I'm not going to quiz you right now, uh, but maybe after the next speakers. The next speakers, Antti Pekka. Oh, you're blind, are you? <laughs> no. All right. And uh, Antti Pekka, Nikula, and Pia Kotro uh, are going to uh, do a presentation for us on best practices. There's a student retail shop. Uh, as a learning method in the vocational schools right now in Finland, Germany, Denmark, and the Netherlands, and I think you're going to introduce us to that. Is that correct? Yeah. Yep. Okay, great. please come on up. Thank you. Okay, good afternoon everyone. We have the best place right before the coffee and they're just bringing it in so I know that everybody's very excited to hear us speak for the next uh, 15 seconds, which I count that we have left in the program. But let's start by standing up because everybody's falling asleep. I, I was, I've been watching you guys. And please lift up your hands and turn around and then the other way as well. Okay, now please sit down. <laughs> I hope you're now awake because it's really boring to talk when everybody's, you know, falling asleep. Okay, my name is Pia Kotra, I come from Jyväskylä, Finland, and we are going to talk about the Triple Learning Platform project very, very briefly, and then present, uh, I think, the 103rd method of teaching entrepreneurship, uh, as I've been counting today, uh, which is uh, having a student shop in a college. And we are presenting four different models that we have been trying out in Finland, Denmark, Germany and Holland. So I hope this is something very useful that you could take into use also in your own college. Okay, and I have a colleague, Antti Pekka, with me, who is presenting with the, the whole thing. Okay, first to start with, this is the uh, team that we have been working with. We have four colleges, as I mentioned, one from Finland. Okay, they are jumping up. Uh, one from Finland, one from Denmark, one from Netherlands and one from Germany. And then also we are working with the Junior Achievement in Finland, in Latvia, in Denmark. And then we have a shop owner society from Holland working with us in the project and the Employers Confederation of Latvia. Okay, and the aim of this project was for the students, teachers and organizations to learn from each other and to transfer the best practices, not only the student retail shop, but about, about visual merchandising in the colleges, how to decrease the dropout rates in the college, which is a big, big issue in the vocational education at the moment, and also to create the descriptions of the student retail shops which we will show you in the next couple of slides. And additional targets also dissemination of the project outcomes. 
and maybe, hopefully, in the future, Yanis will maybe tell something later about that, about the possibility to establish a student visa shop in Riga Plaza here in Riga as well. Okay, then to the actual concepts that we have been trying out. First, in uh, Holland, we have uh, three different shops in the city centers of Dokkum, Kolum and Leuwarden. And uh, these shops are selling uh, changing assortment from local, uh, local entrepreneurships, for example, clothes, accessories and household products. And these three different shops are open uh, every day from 10 to 6 and also in holidays and Saturday. And the personnel of the shop are actually students who are running the whole shop on their own. And they are working uh, for the shop for a period of 10 weeks. And um, the special features about the, the Dutch model of having a shop is that they are cooperating very closely with the local entrepreneurs. They have 31 entrepreneurs in Dokkum, 7 in Kolum and 10 in Leuwarden. And they also have a classroom within the shop premises so that they can, they can have some classes um, in the actual shop and trying out the things. Uh, these students are mainly business students and when they are uh, for example, learning to do sales uh, job, they can first learn it in the classroom and then they can go, go to the shop and do it in practice as well. Uh, and they have also integrated here in Holland uh, different departments of the school. They have the beauty and wellness, the business students and the security students all working together in these shops. And then our next student retail shop from Germany, from Wittmund, and the speciality there is the cooperation with the football clubs. As you can see, they have Bundesliga football clubs, Hamburger, Bayern Munich, Werder Bremen, St. Pauli, and Borussia Dortmund. And they are open in the afternoons, on Monday to Friday from 2 till 6.30 p.m. and on Saturdays as well. And again, there is also the students who are in charge there's a group of 70 students who are responsible for the shop and they've been divided into groups of four to five students in a group and at, at one time always there are two students together working in a shift in the college or in the shop. Next one. Uh, and then the last two uh, shop concepts that we are presenting is one in Denmark and one in Finland and the common denominator in these shops is that they are uh, located inside the school buildings. And first uh, about the uh, Danish shop. Uh, the products sold in these shops are candy, campus vile merchandise and school equipment. So it's mainly uh, aimed towards the students to shop in this store. And the opening hours are uh, from the morning up until early afternoon, from Monday to Friday. And of course on holidays when the school is closed then the shop is closed as well. And the personnel of the store uh, is that one class, around 20 students, 15 to 20 students, is running the shop for one semester. And uh, there's always two to three students working together in the store at one time, one shift. And the special features about this store is that the class has a lot of freedom to plan the whole concept. They decide what kind of products they want to sell for that one semester. They do the buying in of the goods. Uh, they do all the marketing, planning and also implementation. They, for example, make a, a television commercial for the store and all kinds of leaflets and brochures for the store. And then the fourth concept, our retail shop here in Finland, Jyväskylä, is also within the school premises like POC. And the special feature mainly is it mostly concentrates on the young entrepreneurs, junior achievement company products. For example, jewelry, handicrafts, imported goods, clothes, and so on, and also hair care products. It's open Monday through Friday, and during the holidays it's closed. And we have their store manager who is working there with the students. So it's not just the students, but there's also a store manager. And special features, as you can see in the pictures, that we also, within the shop, we have a beauty parlor and a meeting space for young entrepreneurs. And we've been taking from, from the document thing that we have a pop-up store. So we have the store in the school premises, but for a week we go into the pop-up store, into the city center, into the shopping center to sell our goods. 
Okay, now you probably have a question that why should we have this kind of retail shop for the students? Uh, what we have learned together with our international team is that this kind of store gives uh, a very practical way of learning parts of the curriculum. You understand as teachers that it's uh, much more different just sitting in the classroom and thinking and talking about selling a good than actually being in a store and selling it to real customers. And also, um, which is especially true in Finland, we have a lot of chain stores that are very, very strictly guided by what kind of marketing you can have there. All the materials comes from somewhere else from the world. Uh, but working in this kind of a retail shop, student retail shop, the students have much more freedom and responsibility and more versatile tasks than in a normal chain store. For example, here you can see some of the uh, marketing materials that the Dutch students have designed for their own store and on the lower picture you can see the pop-up store in Finland where the students actually made the whole visual image for the store. Um, for you, what might be very interesting who are working with the Junior Achievement Young Enterprise programs is that it offers a supply chain for Young Enterprise products. For example, if you are familiar with the EWB program, so this could be a good opportunity to start up your own shop and have the products from different countries being sold in one shop in your own country. And it also increases the cooperation between the colleges and the working life itself. Pia, do you have some other words? Maybe we should present a team. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, we have our special guests here with us and the um, I'm sorry, who expert about their, their own shops. Let's first, the Netherlands, Annie, Herper and Benny, please stand up so everybody And Joost. And Joost as well. So you can see it. <laughs> so, while you're in the workshop, if you want to ask questions from them, so these are the guys about the Dutch model. And then the Wittmund, Tim and Stefan. From Denmark, Leile, the two Jensens, Per and Paul. Okay, do you have any questions? We have 15 and a half seconds. <laughs> <laughs> if not, then we thank you and Janis, is it time for coffee or how do we continue? Okay. <laughs> First of all, thanks a lot. This is for Pia and I hope you Thanks, Pia. And, uh, <laughs> and I can prove that this project is very interesting for vocational schools and even more if you have a student company. Uh, so it is really good uh, the possibility to combine the student retail shop with the student company products. And uh, that's why also here we have uh, representatives from vocational schools for which we will de de deliver the materials about the student retail shop. And as well here is representatives from, um, from um, or Confederation of Labor in Latvia. So uh, as well, so we can have a really good uh, conversation uh, during the um, workshops in the group. So. Thanks a lot. And I am really appreciated to be a part in this project. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, just before we break, I have to tell you that uh, Junior Achievement Latvia didn't want this to be a normal coffee break. They wanted you to actually have a best practices coffee break. And uh, to provide that incentive, I'm going to tell you a little bit more about what the awards have been. The awards today are for you to use tomorrow in Riga Plaza at a shop called the Coffee Inn. And they're going to have a special table set aside for all of you to get together and to network. Something we try to emphasize to the students at Riga Business School all the time. To network, network, network. Now, the previous speakers just gave you a few targets who to network with. But I can tell you that the most successful networkers will be saving some money on coffee tomorrow. <laughs> so, with that, if it's okay, we'll take a little coffee break, okay? Well, we're going to start networking. Coffee's in the back.